so it's uh it's been another week it has i, I hear i hear you're gonna have a good week yes that's a lie oh my god we've got we have another tro- it's it's that time of year we have a tropical storm slash potential hurricane coming to to say hello to me about Thursday or so. I was I was oh, hopefully by then it will be burned out. It's gonna be Thursday night, Thursday during the day. I I am I have reached that I I had to go up on the roof of the porch today because I had to make sure it's waterproof for the cats if they choose to take shelter there during the storm. Here's my giant nice. crawling up on the Death. porch. In ninety plus degree weather with a hundred degree heat index, and don't I, I hate when when weather people go like the heat index. This is what it feels like. No, the heat index is what the temperature effectively is. It's not feels like. It's not like wow, I'm feeling. No, it's not like a vibe. Nice. Okay. <laughs> also, like I feel like once you're past like ninety five. It just feels like hot. Yeah. Especially when like, we're... is anybody being like, I don't know. It doesn't really feel like 110. It maybe feels like 105. No. No. Uh, we have, we, we, we've, we've been lucky here this year because it's been the wettest summer Denver has had in like a century, mm-hmm. which is not the lucky part. The lucky part is that has made fire season. Yeah, considerably less bad because you know we're not covered in dried out brush. Every and everything's weirdly green because it's been raining almost every day all summer, which is very strange for Denver. Oh, be for soon. Things have changed. Um, yeah, at least everything's not on fire. Yeah, we've got we've got the the ferals outside, and this is like the first time we've had to try to figure out what to do with them during a storm. One of them, Calvin, has finally got to the point he will come onto the porch when it's raining because he figured it's nicer here than under the utility buildings or a car. The others are very stupid and want to stay under a utility building or a car. We have food. We have water. We have comfy little beds. We have two two litter boxes. And they're like, that. we're going to hang out under the Chevrolet down the street. We're fine here. Let's get her underway here. We're rolling. Each week, Catherine, a radio dead, our audience, go out and be worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? Now, I, I, I am one of the gamers. I like the, the video games. You know, I I like my Ataris. I like my uh, my uh, Magna boxes. I like my video game. A game I've been waiting for a very long time is coming out. It's Starfield. It's the next Bethesda game, which is, you know, it's Skyrim and, and Fallout 4, only it's in space. It's a space game. And I'm like, yes. And this has been big news. I've been following it. During the last week, a full hour of footage from the game leaked on the internet. Leaked. Uh, a dude oh dear. got you know Xbox copy copy of the three hundred dollar collector's edition too, which is like sold out everywhere. Got collector's edition, opened it up, played the game for an hour, and recorded it badly on his phone, and then put it up on the internet. And it was like, wow, this is cool. We're like, did this guy break street date? Was this like a, a review or something? And it went everywhere. It was cute. It went all over the internet. All over the Yeah. All yeah. over the Yeah. Well, no. He, did, he, he was not a reviewer. He was not Break Street Date. This is one of the biggest fucking idiots in ever. Bring this over here. So I can read the shit. Starfield leaker arrested in Memphis, charged with theft of role-playing video game. 
this dumb motherfucker. Let's start here. According to gaming website Kotaku, 29-year-old Darren Harris posted the first 45 minutes of the spacefaring role-playing game online, a video that went viral even after it was taken down from YouTube. Harris also posted listing for additional copies of the game, with videos showing him going to FedEx to pay for shipping of the copies. An affidavit filed in Shelby County says the Memphis Police Department, contacted uh, by the head of security and loss prevention, at Vantiva, formerly Technicolor, telling MPD about the theft and the Starfield was not available for release till September 6th. With help from Vantiva, an officer verified the games were stolen property, received a warrant, and searched Harris's home. Officers found one FedEx package sealed with a copy of the stolen game, four Xbox Starfield games, and two Xbox Series upgrade editions. They also found three handguns and marijuana. One of the handguns was reported stolen. Harris, was, who was arrested on August 24th, told police he purchased the game from an unknown individual. Started with felony theft, misdemeanor theft, and misdemeanor possession of controlled substance. So how did he get it? He worked in a warehouse. Oh. See, what happens with video games is they have a street date. That is the date they are allowed to sell the games, the release date. Right. Before then... They go to, they, they just sit there waiting to go out. Right. Yeah. For ex this exact reason to prevent leaks and spoilers and shit. Not only did he steal a bunch of copies of the game, he stole the $300 collector edition with the digital physical digital watch and shit. He stole a bunch of those, which a lot of outlets uh, like GameStop and everything have been like, sorry, we had to cancel your pre-order. And people are like, why the fuck is this happening? Well, apparently this motherfucker was stealing them. And Andy was taking them and putting them on Macari. Not only was he doing that, he was making videos about how he was shipping them out and showing everybody him shipping these copies. Just put them all up at once, too. He didn't just, like, trickle them out. He, like, put up, like, I've got all of these collector's editions. He, comp he got footage of himself playing it. He had his gamer tag up on the Xbox. All this identifying... It his own face was on the videos. You fucking idiot! That's, that's, you're, that's bad criming. That is incredibly bad crime. That is, that is the stupid, this, mm -hmm. like, okay, here's how you do this. I'm going to tell you how to do crime, everybody. Pay attention. YouTube algorithm, like, he's going to do what? Job. <laughs> Once these collector's editions sell out after the game releases, the value skyrockets because they they, all, they are a limited edition collector's edition. Right. He could have sold these for a grand a pop after the release. If he just like waited a month. And instead of selling like 30 copies at the same time, then like sell like what? Just sell one, a grand on that account. And then make a new account and sell yeah. another cop. Hey, nobody. You don't like use your face. Don't put your face. Don't put your gamer tag on your fucking Xbox. On what is going to be like incredibly vi thousands of millions of people looked at that video because they were waiting for any info about Starfield. Millions of people. And what made it worse? What killed me? He was not tech gamers. He didn't know what the game was. He didn't know how to play it. He was incredibly bad at it. It was it, like he got stuck in an airlock for like 10 minutes before he realized he had to put on a helmet before he'd go outside. Is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> like if you're going to go out, if you're going to leave an airlock, helmet. Yeah. It was literally that bit from The Martian, only for real. Wait. For fake for real. But, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm... I'm... The few times I have played video games, this is... This is... This is me. This is your little controller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm that asshole that ducks when, like, 
the other guy punches my character in the video game. And I'm also that asshole. It just hits random buttons. Just see what happens. So. Like, th this, is, this would be like stealing the Mona Lisa and then hopping on Instagram and taking pictures with it. Like stealing the Mona Lisa and then setting it on fire? Well, no. This would be like, you know, putting all the filters on it. That. You didn't see that movie. Huh? The, oh, no, wait, no. The, the knives out. The, yeah. Well, not stealing the Mona Lisa, just fucking it up. But anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this, this guy. Oh, my God. I'm so mad at this guy. Because I, I kind of want to be amazing at Mario Kart. I tell you what game I would, was amazing at was Soul Calibur. Because that is a game, I literally walked through that game once, much to the fury of all the dudes I used to hang out with, just doing, <laughs> there's a character named Sophia, and like one of her signature moves is she would knee the other guy in the balls and then go, I'm sorry. So she was my favorite character. Of course. I walked through the game. I didn't even have to hit continue or like restart once, just doing this. And the dudes were furious. So if you're a button masher, Soul Calibur. All right. So mentioned earlier, we have a tropical storm. Yes. And when these happen, normally you get tropical storms hurt. It's going to be a hurricane when it hits floor when it hits floor. Major hurt. And when you get those, you get like be prepared to fucking evacuate, leave, uh, get your prescriptions, get your important papers. Fill your gas tank. This is going to go down as one of the biggest fuck-ups. Like, the lawsuits are going to be amazing. Because just, we're like a day away. Two, a day or two away from the hurricane. And, uh... Cars may stop working mid-evacuation due to fuel contamination. That's putting it that that's uh that that's putting it lightly because the fuel contamination in, in question well let's get to it a potentially widespread fuel contamination at gas stations along Florida's Gulf Coast the exact place this is going to happen could cause car engines and power generators to stop working just this tropical storm ideally approaches the area the contamination was caused by human error at the port of Tampa. The affected gasoline and diesel supplied by Sitco may have been sold at nearly 30 stations after 10 a.m. on Saturday, mostly along the Florida coast from the Tampa Bay region to Fort Myers. Again, exactly where the hurricane is set to hit. Using fuel could cause engine damage or stop a vehicle or generator from operating entirely. The problem is they got gas in the diesel and they got diesel in the gas. It's like, you got your chocolate, my peanut butter, your peanut butter, my chocolate. You can say that, except not delicious. Not delicious at all. In case you don't understand why this is a problem, I know some people, literally people I don't, don't know why. I know it'll murder your engine. I don't know why. Because of the different rates of explosivity, or I, I forget the correct term for it. Um, If you put diesel into a regular engine, it will explode at a different rate and you will get knocking and you will get pistons firing at the wrong time. Eventually it destroys the engine and the same can happen vice versa in a diesel because the timing goes off and yeah, it boom. No, here's, here's a fact stuff you did. I, I had to look up to find out. Did you know on a normal, normally you can't just pull up to a gas uh, pump and accidentally put the the diesel in regular because the diesel the diesel pump is more girthy it has girth it won't fit in the regular uh gas tank and the regular one is thinner but there is a collar inside called the uh the fuel uh guard inside the diesel engines it has to have the appropriate girth to unlock that collar the little ones can't the thin ones can't can't unlock it so it can't get in there take that as you will everybody but i mean same <laughs> <laughs> but 
But normally, so this is normally this can't be done accidentally on a normal basis. But someone fucked it up. If people are not paying attention to the news, because what, what the news is telling them right now, immediately, if you filled up there, stop driving your car immediately. Yeah. But if people don't aren't following that information, their fucking engines are going to blow up. And it's going to blow up when they're trying to run away from a hurricane. Yeah. This is one of, going to be such a lawsuit. Which is going to only tax emergency services that much further. Mm-hmm. When there's already a fucking crisis. So but that's not great. If you've never seen people evacuated they do crazy they shut down uh the the they they set both hot both all four lanes of the highway or all eight lanes to out of town you can get on the other side of the road everybody leave imagine just one in a hundred cars with their engines blowing up as they're trying to leave town just one in a hundred the catastrophe that would try to be for the evacuation Right. But it's going to be more than that because. Oh, just, God. just the, 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 the loss. Sitco, or, or just, I don't know if BP or ExxonMobil actually owns them. And they all own, like, there's like two, two gas companies left or some shit. But yeah, they're, they're, people are going to be like, you fucked my car. I want a new car. And yeah. Also, we couldn't leave the hurricane. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. The impacted stations have all been lit, asked to stop selling gas. BJ's Wholesale, 7-Eleven, and Handy Foods were some of the impacted stores. Which, like, BJ's. How packed is a BJ's Ooh. all the time? Yeah. People like their BJ's. So, oh. Jesus. Everybody's got to get their BJ. So, yeah, that... Especially when it's got just the right girth. I've got it. I figure you, whoever did this, they're they're going to fire them and they're going to hire them again just so they can fire them again. Can you imagine though, like if this was an honest mistake, I would never fucking sleep again. Like the the immense guilt and anxiety and horror from that. Like, I would never sleep a night again in my life. It's like, just, I kind of feel bad for that person if it was an honest mistake because. It's, it is just like it, quite literally a perfect storm. Like, I, I love how it was the exact place the hurricane is like perfectly the Tampa Bay, the Bend area. Fucking hell. Now, what amuses me. In a, in a very dark humor type of way, is like, you remember after like 9 11 happened, you had all the shriveled up old evangelicals that were like, well, of course they're hot because of the gays. Because that city is Babylon. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That, they, they're, they get awful quiet <laughs> when like Florida, yeah. a massive hurricane hits Florida or Louisiana or. Like, Texas is just frozen and underwater. Like, weirdly, the Pat Robertsons of the world get real fucking quiet when that shit happens. Well, fortunately, Pat Robertson's going to be quiet forever because his wrinkled ass fucking doll. Well, yeah. But, like, I just... I Best just, thing he ever did. I just find that interesting. I that, just find that interesting. That was that, some like, of his... It's God's wrath when it's a blue state. That that was some of his finest work. Just, yeah, I... I, I... <laughs> I, I really respected it. It, it. it was it was a it was a twist, but you know, I, I, I actually came I was actually on board with that. Was it a twist? I mean we're all gonna do it eventually. Yeah. All right, next up. This is Grace Comedy, Sarah. This is some of the saddest shit you were gonna read all week. And oh my. These motherfuckers. Arkansas. Arkansas men arrested for shooting each other while wearing bulletproof vest. 
Note vest singular. Rogers, Arkansas. Two Arkansas men face charges after allegedly shooting each other during a night of drinking while each man tried on a bulletproof vest. Charles Eugene Ferris, 50, and Christopher Hicks, 36, were both arrested Sunday on charges of felony aggravated assault. Benton County Sheriff's deputy took the initial report from Ferris at the hospital, where authorities say this is... Here we go. Ferris invented a story to cover for Hicks. This is precious what they did. Ferris said he was hired to protect an asset who paid him $200 to follow him in the woods at Hobbs State Park. Ferris said the pair went out to the woods and met another man around 10 p.m. The man approached Ferris's asset when a gunfight broke out. Ferris said he was struck six times, but also managed to return fire before driving off with the asset. So he came up with this little, like, GTA mission. Right. That, like, you know, not only did did he, he, he he's in, like, this, this you know, I'm, I'm being hired for, for to protect this special asset, but he's the hero of it. Because he, like, he fired back and he took yeah. some shots and just, like, like, action movie shit. But bless us. That almost almost exactly that scenario is in Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me. Because mm. Laura and Bobby go off to buy some cocaine and or was it in was it in the TV show? Or the, no, it's in the movie because Laura Palma is never alive in that TV show. Laura and Bobby go to buy some cocaine and he accidentally shoots the guy. Here's the part where you're gonna die. However, Ferris's wife arrived at the hospital a short time later, telling investigators that her husband and Hicks shot each other while drinking on the back porch. <laughs> that is a woman who was having. Ma'am, I'm glad to say your husband's going to be okay. And, you know, we appreciate that he's a hero. A hero? That man's a damn idiot. What did he tell you? That is a woman who has had the fuck enough. Yeah. Enough of this shit. Now here's uh, listen. So are they just like handing the bulletproof vest back and forth? Yes. Ferris said he had been wearing the vest and he asked Hicks to shoot him with a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle. That stopped the bullet, but still hurt and left the mark on his chest. Ferris became Which is pissed. Really work. Like it. It's not like it is on TV where you just get up and keep running. Ferris became it still has force. Ferris became pissed because he was hurting from the shot and, quote, unloaded the clip into Christopher's back after Hicks put the vest on. Hicks only suffered bruising with the gunshot. Now, here's the part where it gets really fucked up. This is this close away from tragedy. The way bulletproof vests work is they have Kevlar fibers that are there to stop the impact. When you shoot a bulletproof vest, those fibers break. Bulletproof vests are not reusable. If you shoot a bulletproof vest, it's done. You have to replace the, the 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 padding in there to make them safe again. You can't just keep shooting them. So this almost, if he had shot his friend in the front, fortunately he shot him in the back where there was still padding. If he'd shot him in the front, dude would be dead. But I also want to review, like he said, hurt, 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 shoot me. Yep. And then he got mad at his friend because it hurt. Yep. Like the end of fucking scream. Yep. You told him to shoot you. You fucking idiot. I just, I love that his wife was just like, I am done. Are you going to arrest them? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> How long is not I'm going to kill them? You go how long you keep him? Well, keep him longer. The mug shots are precious too. Look at that. I know. They just they 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 bless your heart, honey. Bless your heart. God damn. I just I like I am still and he shouldn't be anymore because i live in fucking america uh, but it still just absolutely turns me upside down the way that people think that guns are toys 
Well, they, there's Bang Bang TV show cops and 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 this boom lasers. Like, they bam. It's a little machine that is. Its only purpose is to make things dead. Yeah, but that's, that's the cool. only thing it's good for. That's the only thing it's built for. And you think that's toys? Get a paintball gun, you fucking brain donors. Let's move on along. This is another one where where I I bring it up a lot that that bit George Costanza from Seinfeld. I know it's going to be like impenetrable for a bunch of kids. Like, was that wrong? Should I not have done that? That's that's this next story. This guy. All right, let's see. Um, trouble man accused of stealing nearly five thousand dollars of town's tax money. Police charge 56-year-old. I, I used to live in Trumbull. Uh, Back before I did this show. Police charge 56-year-old Robert Withington of Trumbull with larceny on Friday following a lengthy investigation. Investigation focused on the theft of several thousand dollars in town tax receipt funds. Investigators say the employee reported they had discovered the uh, bag. They were making a run to the bank. They discovered the bag was missing. They arrived at the bank branch on Quality Street that day. The deposit bag was marked with the bank's insignia, contained documents that identified the town of Trumbull as the owner. Detectives conducted numerous interviews, obtained several search warrants, and interviewed and reviewed multiple surveillance videos from local businesses, and determined the deposit bag had been inadvertently dropped from the ground outside the bank. Police said Withington then picked up the bag. When Withington was interviewed, police say he admitted to being the bank on May 30th and took the bag that, the bag that contained almost $5,000 of cash. Authorities say Withington kept the bag, believing he had no obligation to return the bag to the owner. So his defense was finders keepers? Honey, no. Was that wrong? No, that's not how that works. Should I not have done that? What do you mean it wasn't mine? No. It's no. Like, it's, like, it's not like when it. It's not like if it touches the ground, it's fair game. Yeah. No. There's no five second rule on money. No. No fuck. Like just That's be also not what they mean when they say secure the bag. It's not what they mean. Like if you if you just find shit, it's not yours. I and sometimes sure. Like if we're talking about a quarter that you find on the ground, probably nobody's looking for that. You could you could make a case for like a twenty dollar bill if there's nobody around who obviously dropped it. Right. Right. Five grand in a bag with identifying documents. And they, they lock those bank bags, too. They've got little padlocks yeah. built into it with, like, little, like, uh, I don't know if they're actually key locks or they have the, the, I think they have both. He had to cut that fucker open to get the money out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's pretty clearly not yours. Don't stop the fish. Well, next up, more airline shenanigans. Oh, this this whole family is ratchet. God damn it! Fucking just, I, oh my god. They are lucky they were not beaten to death before the plane landed. Airline passenger reportedly mistakes her pepper spray for a hand lotion. Forces an emergency landing. Now, that's bullshit. We'll get it back Shut around to it. Up. No, you did not. American airline flight from Miami to New York was forced to make an emergency landing after a passenger gassed the cabin with pepper spray. According to one report, the woman claimed that she accidentally deployed the noxious chemical after mis mistaking it for hand lotion or sanitizer. No, you didn't. A Reddit user that reported their significant other was on board the flight said passengers in the back of the plane began unexpectedly coughing and complained they couldn't see. 
It's unclear who caused the disturbance, and a flight attendant called on anyone who knew it was going on to come forward. A woman eventually admitted to using the spray, but said it was on accident. Uh, after they touched down, the woman and her partner and teenage son were squared off the aircraft. Um, other commenters on the, po- uh, the post who claimed they were on board the plane said the pepper spray had- was no accident, and the family who deployed the pepper spray had been aiming for a different family across the aisle. Some users said they had no reason, uh, they had no idea why they were suddenly having trouble breathing. The TSA forbids pepper spray on flights. It is unclear how the family was able to bring it aboard the plane undetected. They hid that shit. That's how. Who doesn't know at this point that they recycle the air? Many people. Many people. Like, have you ever have you ever noticed that on a plane you can't open the window? There's a reason for that. Well, sure, yeah, it's because window latches are expensive. They'd have to put them on all the windows. It would add up real quick. That's why. So, like, first of all, the fucking audacity is you to just pepper spray someone who's presumably annoying you. Right. You. But also in an enclosed space with no ventilation and there's another thing about really people stupid really stupid people really people stupid listen to me tonight they think, seem to think that because even today even after all these years they seem to think because the word pepper is involved that yeah. it's just it's it's just it's no big deal it's it's capsation that is the chemical that nature came up with to say, hey, all you mammals, don't put this in your mouth. I made this for birds. This is not for you. And our dumb asses are over here going, what? <laughs> what? I didn't hear. Where did you... Can I have some more? It's not like that. It is a fucking... We've, we've built a whole internet television show based on watching celebrities do that until their head bleeds. It's it's a fucking chemical weapon when you distill it to the point. It, it's dangerous. It li- it literally results in chemical burns. And they're like, no, nah, it's fine. It says pepper on it. It's not going to hurt you. But just the fact that she tried to be like, oh, I thought it was my hand. Lotion. Really? Because oh, one comes in a squeeze tube uh-huh. and one comes in a spray can. With a big red thing on the top and all sorts of warnings and yeah. pictures of bears. They, and don't, they don't look the same. They don't dispense the same. So um, try better lies. Last week. Do you remember we had the dude who was uh, doing it with the go-kart? Trying to escape law enforcement. Drunk. Fucking yeah. go-kart. And we were like how the fuck do you do that dude like for for serious what the fuck because i can just imagine the cops incredulous trying to pursue the motherfucker well someone had to one-up that they had to get even more game accurate and this is an amazing mug shot just just spec fucking tacular Vincennes man arrested for driving a Power Wheels Jeep in the street while intoxicated. There, there, there. Look at there. Look at him. Look at that face. Yeah. Vincennes, Indiana. Uh, Vincennes. Is, is it Vincennes? Vincennes. Vincennes. Well, they spelled it two different ways. I know, right? It's spelled one way in the dateline and another way in the story. There's so, Vincennes in the end. Uh, there's Vincennes, Indiana, and Vince Ness. In... Anyway, he's arrested for driving. For journalist. Proofread. Indiana State Police Trooper was on patrol on 2nd Street Wednesday night or 9 p.m. Saw a man driving down the road in a Power Wheels Jeep with no lights or reflectors. Why did they have to point that out? Well, it wasn't Excuse safe, me, Tara. You, you have a tail light out. Really? I don't have taillights. 
trooper pulled him, trooper pulled him over and identified the man as 51 year old John McKee. Officers noted that he seemed to be impaired, gave him a field sobriety test, which he failed. Or testing a good Samaritan hospital show McKee was under the influence of, get this combination, meth and marijuana. I don't even want to know what that does to your brain. Right? Like, you remember that old, this is your brain on drugs lady with the fucking egg and the bullshit? That, this, this is, this is on frappe. I, I would like 72 shots of espresso and a Benadryl. It's like, your, your, your soul is trying to do two different things at the same time. <laughs> How do you end up in like, this situation? You... <laughs> Fucking power wheel. Presumably, presumably, and unfortunately, you are somewhere in proximity to a child whose power wheels you stole. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that doesn't count as Grand Theft Auto. I just, I can, how is he? So, yeah, I can, I can imagine he's just, he's driving it like this. With his uh, with his arms and his legs all stuffed in the tiny yeah. little ass seat. Like, how did you even get in there? What's the max speed on those? Like ten miles an hour, maybe. I think so. Like, we got like all of my neighbors on my block had COVID babies. Um, Dan and I took in a COVID kitten, and everyone else had human babies. <laughs> um, and a couple of those kids have them, and like they go down the sidewalk and they're like look at me i'm driving and it's very cute but they're going like two miles an hour because they're children and it's not safe for them to go any faster well well th this just goes to show you don't mix those drugs because then you will attempt to yeah. to make this 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 the stupidest theft i wonder if it's with one of those like Man, I could really go for some Funyuns, but I'm too fucked up to drive. I know what to do. If I'm not driving a real car, it doesn't count. It does. It does. We've, yes, we've, it, it does. In fact, we've learned that inside an enclosed tube where you're recycling the fucking air is not where we set off chemical weapons. Probably don't don't bring those on board with you too. We have learned that if Finders Keepers is not a legal, you know, maybe if you're in the middle it's of not the legal, yeah, like it's not a legal defense, and there's definitely a limit on it. Like if you're in the middle of fucking international fucking waters, Finders Keepers kind of a, but not on downtown street. It's not how that fucking works. We have learned that dudes will sit there testing fucking bulletproof vests and get pissed when they work. Like, don't you guys have Netflix? Just watch Nailed It. That show is delightful. We have learned there's going and to nobody be... gets shot. We have learned there's going to be some amazing lawsuits coming out of Florida very soon. And some Awful injuries, probably. Astonishing. And finally, we learned uh, if you're going to steal the hottest video game to be premiering anytime soon, and make a video about it, put it online, and sell all the stolen ones you have, identifying in information is bad. That's maybe that, wear a mask and get a VPN. Do you, do you know what happened with this? The people he worked with at the warehouse saw the fucking video. They saw his game. They saw it. They're like, oh, hell no, Darren. I, and I, you know, I honestly don't know if they turned him in because he was such a prick or that he didn't cut them in on the action. <laughs> 